I've got my coffee again. Hopefully you've got a brew because it's time for us to dig into another business problem that I hope you can solve in the time it takes us to have this coffee break. Today, I'm gonna to complement your document management strategy by giving you a little tip that's gonna save you acres of time when you scale this up across a load of document libraries. And in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at getting automated notifications into Teams for anybody who needs to know when a document that you've authored or somebody authored becomes due for a review. It's a common problem in a lot of document life cycles where things get written, things get published, and then three years down the line you've forgotten to update it. Why not have Power Automate remind you when it makes sense? Before we dig into the process, a lot of people do say to me, John, why don't you solve more Power Apps problems? And the reason for that is because I favor what I call small process. Solving small processes adds up in your business to time you've saved not doing the mundane, not doing the boring. And there are also things you can build really quickly which accumulate over time and save you loads of time. Power Apps for me often fits into the bigger process category. You've got a bigger problem you wanna solve and we'll get to that at some point. But for now, let's dig into Power Automate and your document library and see how we can save you some time not having to remember that you need to update your documents in a month's time, in six months time, in a year's time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. So here's the setup. We've got a document library. That document library is pretty typical for a SharePoint document library in that I set this up to require check out and check in on documents to create these new version numbers. Have a look at my previous video if you want to find out how I synchronize version numbers into the documents automatically. But what we're going to think about is certain documents need to be reviewed, updated and checked at different points. And if we forget, that's a big problem for our organization. And it's that problem that I think and I hope has brought you to this video. Now I've set some documents up here. It doesn't really matter what they're called, but this is just to indicate these have different phases of reviews. One thing you might choose to do, and I'd recommend it if you want to set up a process is for your documents, you might have a piece of data inserted into that document. I'll just check this one out, which indicates when that document is due to expire. So it has a shelf life and you put this into your documents wherever you want. I've popped it into a header here using what's called the quick part. So just to refresh, if you've never used that before, you use the insert menu and you go quick parts and use a document property and you can use what's called the expiry date. Now all documents will have that available to you. You select it and then the end user, the person who is setting this document up for the first time will select a date. So for example, I'm gonna to choose today as I have done there for this particular document. It doesn't matter there's two in here. I'll just delete that one now. So having removed that example, here's, here's the one that I've set up. I'm gonna set it for today. That's my expiry. I might set it for six months, 12 months, whatever, but the onus is on the author or the person controlling this document library to set these up. You can put them anywhere in the document, header, footer, in the body, it doesn't matter, up to you. But the important thing here now is that we set up some document control properties that we can hook into using Power Automate. And from there, we can remind people about an expiry that's coming up. So let's have a look at what that looks like. So I'll check this one in. Uh, I want to save the changes to that document. Yes, I want to check it in. I'll just give it a minor version. Doesn't really matter for this demo. Let's pop over to Power Automate and just have a look at a flow I've already built and I'll talk you through the process. I'm using the modern designer. You can see here the new designer. Uh, equally, these actions will be found in the classic designer. So your preference, however your tenant set up, you'll be able to create this. What I've done is I've created a recurrence trigger. It looks every day at a particular time zone, it's my time zone here, at 10 o'clock in the morning. So it runs every day at 10 a.m. What it will then do is, and I've chosen this action very specifically, is it will read all of the documents that are in my library, but it will only get the properties for all of those documents. Because I don't need anything else. I don't need to retrieve the document into memory and do a thing with it. That'll just slow me down. So I'm using this very particular action, get files, properties only. And all you do is you point it at a particular library, which is what I've done called Time Critical Documents. I haven't set any filters up or any limits, but you can experiment with that. So every day I go and I get my document properties. What I then do is I go through each of those document property sets and I do a little check. So you'll see here some, uh, some scopes, which I'll talk about in a moment. But one thing to note is there are other ways to loop through collections of information using Power Automate. One particular one to explore is called Select. I'll do a video on that soon. If you care about performance 
or you have huge document sets, I would strongly recommend you wait for that video. But this is fine, this particular um, setup for a relatively smallish document set. Going and checking expiry dates that we've got. The reason I say that is because for Power Automate, every visible action step we have here contained within every loop uses Power Automate processing time. So if you imagine you've got a moderately long set of steps here, that might take a few seconds. With it being in a loop, it will take a few seconds times the number of items you have in your list. Now again, that might not be a problem for you, but there is also an overhead in Power Automate working in this visual manner versus pure code, which would be super fast. So when you get into more advanced Power Automate, have a think about that. That's a sidebar. We'll have a look at that in another video. Do post a comment if you want to talk about that particular difference or you want me to dig into that sooner rather than later. Anyway, so we're going to go through each document and the way we do that is we just look at all of the outputs from the get file properties only. There's only one action I can choose, one output, sorry, and that's the body. So it's really simple. We go, okay, for every item, we're going to go and grab some information. So if you imagine you've got a table in memory of all of your documents and all you're doing is going row by row, taking a piece of data and storing that piece of data. Here I've used what's called a compose action. So again, I like to show you which actions I choose. So I use the compose action there. It's in the data operations and it's called compose and it's a dead simple action to use. It's useful when you want to grab a piece of data but you don't need to change that same piece of data. So we'll store the current item name. Again, this is just information from that current get files property. You'll notice here in this context, I've got the see more. Again, a reminder from my last video, don't forget to click that. You often don't see it, but when you do click it, you get a lot more information you can pull. So all this is doing is saying, here's all the data I've got from the get file properties only for this particular action. And then you just go and choose the information that you care about. The reason I'm choosing information here is because I want to build this into a notification later on. So choose what makes sense to you. But here, I've chosen the current item's name, as you can see their name. I've chosen the expiry date. This is the important piece. Because we put that into the document properties, that exists here as a piece of data that I can grab in the same way that the version number exists. So if, if I wanted to do something with version number, the system property version number, I can do that. So I'm grabbing data. I must have deleted it. Let's just put it back into the expiry date. Grabbing the version number, um, I'm grabbing a link to the item. Again, I've just chosen that from the dynamic items available to me. So somewhere down here will be link to item. Let's just quickly scroll down so you can see it. There you go. Take some time to explore the way these actions work in Power Automate. It will be your friend when you get used to reminding yourself to see more. So that's all I've really done here is stored some data. What I've then done just for my own ease is I've used an action called scope. Again, I like to show you these things. Scope just allows you to group a set of actions. Now that's fine and it's great for readability. That's what I've used it for. But the other benefit of scopes is as a result of all of these things happening, you can have an outcome. It can be successful, it can be a failure. You can then look at that and say, has that worked, has that not worked, and make decisions. And then you can add some more intelligence and error handling to your flow. But here I've used it purely for documentation purpose to encapsulate a whole bunch of actions so I know what's going on. So grab some data for the notification. The next scope that I've set up is, all right, let's test whether this document's expired. And the only action that you need to really care about here is this condition. So again, let's just find out where that lives. If we go condition, it lives in the control group. So a condition is just set up with a um, an item that you want to look at, an evaluation, and another item that you want to look at. You can do this um, a number of different ways, but what I've chosen to do is I've chosen to use a little formula here. I'll just show you what that looks like. So instead of pulling data from the properties, I've just typed in UTC and you'll see here some out of the box functions that Power Automate gives you. UTC now will return the exact time and date of now when this thing runs. So remember, I'm running it at 10 a.m. What I'm saying is go and get me the time. OK, that'll be 10 a.m. Every single time that'll be 10 a.m. on the day that I run this and then say 
All right, is that greater than or equal to, and I'll just show you where I chose this particular value, the, um, the expiry date for the current item. Remember, I stored that up here. So that's all I've done. I said, is now greater or equal to than the expiry date? You could put some more complex formula in there. You could do predictive things where it could be, um, is now minus 10 days greater or equal to the expiry date. So give me an, a warning 10 days before it. Experiment with these formulas to get the right pattern that works for you. But that's all I've done. I've gone, is today greater than the expiry date? If it is, go and do a thing. If it's not, fine, move on. Go and get the next document property and try this test. So then the final piece of the flow is I wanna notify somebody Two things you need to do in a, um, in a Teams notification is, first of all, get an app mention for the user that you want to tell about the thing. So maybe this is your document controller, the author. You could make this dynamic if you want, but here what I've done is I've said, go and get me the at mention token for myself because I'm the document controller in this case and that'll work for me. Now this is important. The at mention token is the way, if you remember it, in a Teams channel you go, at John Mandeville and what it'll do is it will um, notify John Mandeville he's got a message to go and read. Behind the scenes there's a little bit of a token that does that, it's a bit of code, uh, that's all you need to worry about. You just go and get the token for that person and then you use an action post message in chat or channel. Choose how you want to post it, here I've chosen as a user, where do you want to put it, well I want to put it in a channel, what team, I've chosen projects, what channel, I've chosen consultancy and support tests and then I've just built a message and into that message, I've put a few little bits and bats. I've put the token, so at John Mandeville, it will say, this document's reached its expiry date. Please take an action. And I've then been kind enough to, just using um, dynamic content, add a bit of data into it. So I've used the file name with extensions. I could have equally used the link to the item. So, you know, I'll just pop that into there. That's how it works. It's as easy as that. Uh, let's just delete that one. In fact, what I've done there, you can see, is I've actually put a URL in which has got the link to the item. But you craft this the way you want to, giving it a subject, and that's all you do. And it'll go through your documents without you having to worry and check and find out what's due for expiry today and give somebody a nudge.